uh, and hold those guys accountable. Yeah. You know, when we were there, Reggie White held us accountable. Uh, Byron, <laughs> Evans, Byron Evans, Byron oh. Evans, Seth Joyner, those guys held us accountable. Andre Waters held me accountable. You know, Wes Hopkins held me accountable. Uh, there's there's no guys out there that's going to hold these guys accountable. And, uh, you know, you just see the, the lack of uh, leadership on the team. day with him he was a cool dude man yeah Freddie um, B, man. <laughs> yeah totally hey mark how do you look at this eagles team you know it's a pretty interesting year that they're heading into the year with a new head coach new entire system and a second year quarterback you know got a couple of starts last year but nobody really knows really you know if he's the guy yet how do you view this this year for the eagles um like there's a lot of teams out there with uh young players that's uh, unproven to a lot of organizations uh being in philadelphia you already know uh, the pressure is always going to be on no matter what position you play. Obviously, Jalen Hurts, everybody wants to see what he can and, and he can't do. Um, I'm a big fan of him. I, I say it all the time on my show. You know, he's played in two different programs and he's excelled in two different uh, situations. Um, you know, he's at playmakers around him. Uh, they've drafted guys uh, in Philadelphia to put speed guys, you know, kind of like guys he had in college around him uh, and getting a Devontae Smith. You know, uh, you know, not a lot of people expecting him to just – put up Alabama numbers, but, you know, it's going to take him some time to, uh, you know, figure out the pro game as well. So, you know, it, it, you know, we're very optimistic as Eagle fans every year. We think we're going to go to the Super Bowl, not as much as the, that team in, in, in Texas. They just brainwash for life. They think they're, they think the Cowboys going to the Super Bowl, <laughs> even when they're the terrible team, the, the worst team in the league. So exactly. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. Uh, you know, they're a young team. The division is up for grabs. Obviously uh, the team in, in DC is really good. Uh, the Giants have improved, but, you know, they don't have, you know, they still have struggles up front. You don't know how Sa Saquon Barkley is going to come back. Uh, you know, obviously having Dak back in, in Dallas, you know, they, they drafted a lot of players on the defensive end of the uh, side of the ball. So, you know, the division should be uh, exciting again. You know, last couple of years has been like, man, it's been terrible. So, you know, with the Philadelphia Eagles and what they've been able to do, um, just hope that these guys just give Jalen Hurst to, uh, the opportunity to uh, excel. You know, so I'm those. As soon as he has a bad game, the media, you know, I'll probably be on him as well because I'm part of the media right now. But, you know, <laughs> right. uh, you know <laughs> they remind me all the time, man. They remind me all the time. <laughs> so, I, you know, I try to be a little biased, but I'm a big fan of him, obviously, from Alabama. But, you know, they got some good pieces around him. If we can stay healthy up front, you know, that's the key. You know, it's not, I don't care how good Jalen is in the pocket or whatever. If he can't have time to set up and find his targets, I don't care how good you are. Right. You know, and, and, you know, I'm going to go on, a, you know, your to your specialty, um, you know, the defensive side of the ball in the cornerback position. We Woo! did. <laughs> we did not. I, I feel as though we didn't put in much of an emphasis and everybody else wanted them to on right. the cornerback position. I think they like what they have in Avanti Maddox, um, you know, and, and a couple other guys, you know, but at this point, I don't see a guy just, you know, stepping up and becoming that force. You know, you stepped up. And made your made your presence known out there at the cornerback position. I didn't see anybody do that, um, you know, till this day. So, why are they not putting emphasis on on the cornerback position? And you think those guys can go out there and, and and take it to that level where they need to be to be opposite of Darius Slay? Um, you know, we, we put a lot of uh, pressure on Slay. You know, he makes a lot of money. Obviously, if you're that number one guy, there's no pressure. Um, that's why I feel as, as defensive back, uh, you know, when when Eric Allen left, I knew I was going to be the guy. You know, they drafted Bobby Taylor high, but, uh, you know, Ray Rosen, they put a lot of pressure on me. And, you know, I was able to rise to that challenge and uh, just just a glue, you know, just it just circulated through the locker room. You know, and to your point, Barry Brooks, I was on uh, Seth Jordan's show a couple of weeks ago, even the linebacker position. Right. When was the last time we had some linebackers that we can be like, OK. We can go after these guys. You know, we put a lot of emphasis on our front line. But once they get past our front four, man, we're it's like, oh, my goodness, hold on. You know, when that ball goes up in the air, it seems like every week when the ball goes up in the air, I'm a little nervous. You know, All the I time. That, I don't feel that confident like, you know, a guy's going to lock this dude down. Somebody's going to hit somebody in the mouth. Somebody's going to set the tempo. I just don't see that. And you look at other teams around the league, I, I always say the Ravens, uh, you know, those guys will hit you in the mouth. Um, you know, when that ball goes up in the air, you see the whole team rally into the ball. 
And same thing with the Pittsburgh Steelers as well. You know, they're, they're secondary and their linebackers fly to the ball. Um, we don't have that. We have a front four that is really, really good. Uh, linebackers, I can't even I can't even name the linebackers right now. That's how bad it is. And, you know, uh, you know, Slay and Maddox, you know, those guys have to step up. And I just don't get it these days, these players. Maybe it's because they got a lot of money. It's like, man, I got money. I'm good. I don't have to really go out here and bust my butt anymore. But at some point, we need to get a dog. You know, go get some yeah. dude that's that's really, you know, trying to make the squad and, you know, don't try to go for the high price guy. Go get a guy that's out there trying to be a dog. Uh, I interviewed Cam Curl. He plays for uh, D.C. He was a late round pick out of Arkansas. Uh, Landon Collin goes down. This guy fills in and he was probably one of the better defensive backs in the National Football League last year. He's a dog. <laughs> right. <laughs> that Tampa Bay defense had some dogs at that yeah. linebacker position, Mark. Yeah, <laughs> David, they, they got dogs, they got horses. They, they got this. <laughs> so I, I'm curious, what the biggest concern I have this year for the Eagles, and and why I'm I'm not you know going over on win totals or anything from just a, a fan to a betting and everything in between standpoint is something you alluded to, which is just how new everything is, and I feel like look when you have the ball and you're working through offense, and you're dictating, you're able to dictate some tempo, it might be, and I'll defer to you and Barrett on this, but it might be easier to get over everything being new. But on defense, when you have a new coordinator, and you have people that are in new spots, and you have just a, a new language of communication, that's where a breakdown can kill you in a game, in a stretch, in a season. So it's not like these guys stink. It's not like I'm down on the coach. My biggest concern, Mark, and I wonder how you see that transferring over on the field, is just the newness, really the language, the communication, and just how brand new everything is on defense. Yeah, there might be some different uh, ways that they call it, you know, terminology, different different coverages. Uh, everybody runs cover one. Everybody plays cover two. Everybody plays cover three and cover four. You know, those are the main coverages that you play in the National Football League. It, it's, it's not it, from high school to college. Uh, to the National Football League. It's really not that complex. And they may be, you know, different verbiages or different languages called for it. From me going to Philadelphia to New Orleans, we mm -hmm. ran the same coverages. It was just different verbiages. Uh, from New Orleans going to Kansas City, playing under Marty Schottenheimer, we played the same coverages. It was just different verbiages. So th this is your job. You know, <laughs> I just can't emphasize it anymore that, you know, people say like, well, they're in a new system. He's new to the team. If you're a veteran guy, you pick that thing up just like that, or, or you're not going to have a job. And, uh, you know, the communication factor, we just don't have a leader uh, on that side of the ball and on the defensive side of the ball to really get those guys in the back end uh, and hold those guys accountable. Yeah. You know, when we were there, Reggie White held us accountable. Uh, Byron, <laughs> Evans, Byron Evans, oh. Seth Joyner, those guys held us accountable. Andre Waters held me accountable. You know, Wes Hopkins held me accountable. Uh, there's there's no guys out there that's going to hold these guys accountable. And, uh, you know, you just see the, the lack of uh, leadership on the team. That's huge, man. That's 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 huge, man. You're, you're absolutely right, man, because uh, at this point uh, we have a young guy, Alex Singleton. We like a lot on, you know, he's a you know, friend of the show. And actually, he's, he's shown he's he's shown the ability to go out. He had 120 tackles last year. Uh, he, he made some plays. But why do we? not go out there and emphasize getting those type of dogs, you know, going out and getting guys, you know, um, like what, what Dallas did, you know, going out and get, get getting a linebacker in the first round. Yeah. That's, you know, he, he's going to make it happen. You know, Barcelona's yeah. going to make it happen. I don't see it, man. Tough. Hold on, Philly fans. Hold on, Philly uh -oh. fans. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Mark, what do you make of this uh, strange situation between the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers right now? Aaron wants out, man. It's, it's, yeah. it's plain and simple. You know, if you turn down that amount of money, obviously, you know, discount double check ain't hurting for no money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's not hurting for no money, man. He, he wants to get out of Green Bay and, you know, with the with the deal that they'd offered, it was going to be five more years. He don't want to spend five more years in Green Bay where it's cold. Well, that you—I thought that was a major point of emphasis. I thought he wanted, he wanted more assurance that he was going to be the guy going forward, and um, love wasn't going to be a fact. Well, love wasn't a factor. They gave him the extension he wanted. They gave him the money that he wanted. He just want—he just doesn't like the GM that bad that he would turn yeah. out twenty-one <laughs> extra million dollars. That's twenty-one <laughs> extra million dollars over what he's going to be making. 
Yeah, that, that, that's a lot of that's a lot of money to be turning down. But obviously, you know, he's going to make a lot of money off the field. Um, he's out here. He's golfing with Phil Mickelson and uh, the, you know Deshambo and you know and, and Tom Brady. He's not hurting for any money, man. He's having a, a great time. And um, if he ends up in Green Bay, it's going to be a he's he's going to plug right in. They're going to win a lot of games. They'll be in the playoff hunt. Uh, but what does that say for Jordan Love? You know, for that young kid, he's sitting at home like. You know, is Aaron coming in? Is he not coming in? And, you know, I remember, uh, you know, when I came in, Ben Smith was the guy and Eric Allen, Eric Allen was holding out. And I'm thinking like, OK, well, if Eric comes in, somebody's got to go. You know, mm-hmm. so that, that just really, really, uh, that really played on my mind. I saw Eric walk in the locker room. Everybody's like, yo, he ain't have, bro, I'd have you back. And then my mind's like, wait a minute. I might be going tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ben was, for, ben was a... Valdosta State was he like Valdosta State or Ben Jordan Love? No, no, no. The um, the cornerback you was talking about. Ben, oh, uh, okay. oh, where he went? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Valdosta State. And, uh, Jordan yeah, Love went know, to Utah yeah. State, I think. Yeah, yeah. You figure he's been preparing, you know, um, all off season, and you know, is he going to be the starter? Is he not going to be the starter? He's been taking reps to court to court that they come out publicly like he's having bad days in practice, and then he comes back and has a great day in practice. So. Um, it's it's up in the air, but man, I'm a huge Aaron Rodgers fan. Man, do what you got to do to get what you want, Aaron Rodgers. You already proved everything. You're going to be a Hall of Famer. You're a Super Bowl champ. You're MVP. I know Denver is flaring up. You know numbers are out there, but you know uh, the Raiders are always looking for something. You know they got money. They they'll they'll find a way to, to get it done. But I don't know. The Raiders just, just their president just stepped down, so it, it, it's a little confusion out here in Vegas as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious though. Just on the heels of that, Mark. What do you feel, and, and this is your your own opinion, like your gut, not necessarily what's been public or, or stated out there, because I know teams are always going to cover them their own rears until they cut a player mercilessly out of their existence on the team. But what do you honestly believe the confidence level is in Carr? Uh, me, per- zero. There you uh, go. Zero, you know, <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Like from a zero to ten percent, I wasn't going to yeah, lead the witness yeah. and say, "Do you have a zero percent?" But I'm thankful at least you gave that answer, right? None. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a he's a good NFL quarterback. But if you're trying to put yourself in the elite status to try to get over the hump, because you know the Chargers, they got a young stud over there. And, you know, obviously Patrick Mahomes is, is the king. And you look at Buffalo and what they have in their quarterback situation. And uh, here is just, you know, he, he's a nice guy. Put it like that. That's, that's, that's the, right. Everybody's always like, oh, nice. hey, Derek Carr's a nice guy. He, he does great <laughs> yeah. things in the community. He's good with his family. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, no, we're trying to win some dang on ball games, man. So they haven't put any emphasis on that uh, quarterback position. They bring in Marcus Mariota, who was, you know, just, just a, he's, he's a journeyman now, but Put some pressure on him and bring somebody in that's that's going to put your franchise over the top because they do have some some young pieces on that offensive side of the ball. You know, they got receivers. Uh, you got Jacobs, who's a running back. You know, they made some improvements in the offensive line. They upgraded their defense, uh, the defensive line. Their secondary is still a little suspect. Um, I'm a big Jonathan Abram fan, uh, but he's got to stay on the field too. You know, he's a, he's a little hothead uh, in, in the secondary, but – for Derek Carr, man, it's like I'm out here and I'm on the radio and I'm, I don't pull no punches, you know. And if I see him in the supermarket, he probably roll his eyes at me because I keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is great. That is great. What's what's now? Are you back in this area? I know you mentioned that you were at this event in Lansdale, so you make it back to this area a lot. Yeah, actually, I'm going to start doing more uh, appearances uh, back in Philadelphia. I'm scheduled to come back there twice next month uh, to do uh, some charity events as well. Uh, you know, I'll be back at the local tab doing uh, some celebrity bartending. Um, we're in the works of doing a Grill and McMillan uh, bourbon tasting at a golf club uh, that's going to be scheduled for next month as well. So all the proceeds that we're doing this for, man, is to help these young men, uh, you know, uh, have a better opportunity. Um, you know, there's because I, you know, I work with kids all over the country and, uh, you know, there's a lot of bullying that's going on. And especially with social media, uh, you see it with shoot, even I get attacked. I'm sure you guys get some some tweets every <laughs> now and then to be like, 
Yo, dude, if you was in my grill, come on now. You wouldn't be saying that. But behind that keyboard <laughs> and that iPhone, oh, they tough. Right. They right. real tough. So, you know, I want to try to help these kids out, man, that's that's feeling the pressure. Um, take them out. You know, meet guys like you guys. Bring them in the studio. Meet guys yeah. like Barrett Brooks. Uh, you know, uh, you know, take them to the Eagles training camp just to, just to see uh, a different side of it that, you know, you don't have to be – the macho guy or the funny guy or the class clown or, or the best athlete, you know? So I just want to use my platform to the best of my ability, man. And Philadelphia has always been uh, like a second home to me, man. Every time I come back, I get a ton of support, man. People uh, jump on board, they rally. So I appreciate you guys giving me this platform as well. Well, Barrett and Aton, he just mentioned bourbon and golf course in the same sentence. So I think we, we would have interest in promoting that. <laughs> Honestly. Look, man. No in, question. We'll make we it happen. We have two courses here between Harry's course and my own where we would love, we can have all four. That's a foursome. We can have all four of us go <laughs> out. We could do the show. Harry lo knows I love to. Hey. Do oh, yeah. Out of the course. Well, at this point, Mark's hey, also hey, a, a, a member of the Jaws courses. Oh, yes. Of course he's a member. Yeah. Of, anybody who yeah. played for the Eagles is an, a member of the. Barrett's always skipping out once a week to go yeah. play golf. <laughs> ridiculous. All right, we got to break in the network real quick. We're back in three with Mark McMillan hanging on the Jacob Media YouTube page. Hey, he's always out golfing once a week. Meanwhile, we try to talk about the open or whatever, and he's out. Whenever Jaws calls, Barrett Barrett goes. It's amazing. Yep. And amazing. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you, yeah. We can't you even gotta, get in on like the yeah, most man, neglected of all the – like give us the course that's on the bottom of the list for Jaws' is, what is he on, 10 now? Valley Brook right? probably. Well, whatever it is. And it's yeah. still a nice course. I'm just saying like, you know, the throwaway where it's like, yeah. you know, Mark or Barrett comes up to Jaws and say, hey, man, you know, I, I need a favor. I've got, you know, cousins of an uncle coming <laughs> in want to play golf. I, not anywhere like great. Just, you know, do you have some place I can go? Oh, yeah, here's Valley Brook. Like that's all we need. Hey, got, it, it, it's not my fault, man. It's, it's not my fault that I play. <laughs> That's the best I, I, I answer off the hook. Up. I'm like Conor McGregor. I apologize to no one. <laughs> right, right. To absolutely no and one. Nor should yeah. you, Mark. No should you, by all means. Play wherever you can. Trust me. <laughs> so, um, you know, being, yeah, being out there. Definitely, man, definitely, uh, definitely want to get ahead. you guys involved, man, with my uh, wine and bourbon tasting. Um, it's a, oh, it's man, a, please distillery that I did in Hershey, Pennsylvania is called Hidden Steel. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're they're on board to anything I got going on. So if you guys want to come to the uh, country club that we're in the works with, with doing, we can do the show there too, man. Yeah. Are you, no uh, are you able to say the club that you're working with? I can't say that yet. Okay. Yeah, I can't okay. say that yet. Because it's is not it in, in stone yet. Is it in PA, Jersey? Yeah, it's not in stone. It's a, it's a PA. Okay. okay. Harry and I are, are in PA. Barrett, as he knows, in South Jersey. That's that's fine. That's fantastic. We got to start. I mean, look, are you looking to do this consistently at the same club or are you looking to bounce around? Because we should do this at both where I am a member and where Harry's a member. Harry's at 1912. I'm at Huntington Valley. I, I'll do whatever. Whoever will have me. Uh, there you go. You know, trust me, I'll get the bourbon there. I got. I'm working. I'm working with a grill company as well, so we'll be able to uh, transport the grill, and I will be there the grill personally myself. And you guys can do the bourbon tasting. Wow, wow. Harry's already there. Oh it's yeah, done deal. I'm That's already there. <laughs> <laughs> You're not even looking at Harry. That's like the silhouette of you know the cartoon <laughs> where they jet. Right, and the right. Silhouette is still there before it dissipates. Yeah, smoke. I'm already on the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Who you got tonight? Harry's Sons? got the cigar. Harry's got the cigar and everything. Oh, yeah. He's oh, yeah. Got those, too. Uh, yeah. Trust me. Yeah. Who do you got tonight? Sons of the Bucks. You know what? Uh, you know, my family, you know, I met my wife in in, uh, in, in Phoenix. Like my kids are born in, in Arizona. I've lived really? there for like over 20-something years. But it's hard to not want to pull for the Bucks, you know? And every time I yeah. see a commercial or I see something with Giannis, I'm like, I want to pull for that guy. You know, and yeah. uh, obviously down the stretch, man, they've been playing really good. And, you know, it's not like Milwaukee has never been there. You know, they've been knocking on the door for the last three or four years. And this is their, it seems like it's their time. And, you know, the Phoenix Suns, this is only their first year being back in the big show since Charles Barkley. So they, they can, they can wait a little bit, but 
uh, it would be huge for uh, Milwaukee to win that game. And uh, what, what, the classic thing I saw was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar rocking a Milwaukee shirt with his own yeah. name on it. I said, yeah. that's, that's OG right there. <laughs> if you're speaking, Kareem, you can wear whatever you want. That's a heavy <laughs> right, right. flex right there. <laughs> now, speaking of Kareem, now to be fair, some of these awards weren't around back then. But to your point, Mark, as we have a couple, we're winding down here, three more minutes, and, and then we're out overtime coming up. But if Giannis wins the championship, assuming he'll win the finals MVP as well, although if Chris Middleton is the lead scorer tonight, he actually has an argument to this. But anyway, it's going to be Giannis. Yeah, it'll be Giannis. So. Two-time MVP, one-time Defensive Player of the Year, NBA Championship Finals MVP. Now, again, in certain cases – a guy played in an era where there wasn't an award like this, like the MVP or DPOY, for example. But the, there's only one other person in the history of the NBA that has that combination. Two MVPs, DPOY, championship finals MVP. Happens to be Michael Jordan. That's it. That's it. Tim Duncan right. never got Defensive Player of the Year. Kare uh, Hakeem and Kevin Garnett never got the second MVP. David Robinson never got a finals MVP or a second MVP. Like this, this championship is going to solidify Giannis, not just as an all timer, but arguably as the best big to ever play, which is crazy. I, I was, uh, hold on, hold on. Don't say the big to ever play now. There, there, there's, there's some, some old timers out there. That yes. Was there, yeah. There, there, Bill Russell is going like to say Kareem and Bill Laker Russell. Fan. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm a huge Laker fan. I, I've never seen nobody dominate the game like Shaquille O'Neal. I, mm. I, I just never seen anybody dominate the game on both ends of the floor when he was in top shape, you know, when Kobe was pushing him and riding him. <laughs> I know what Giannis <laughs> is doing is incredible, but I I, 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 I I, will put Giannis in the paint with Shaq and it'll be like, whoa, he'll yeah. just be another guy. Shaq absolutely dominated the game. It was almost like Reggie White. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I used to see the fear in some of those D linemen eyes is like, yo, and I, obviously I used to always talk trash, you know, I used to always go to the offensive tackles and be like, you know, Reggie is, he's a little upset today. So you might want, you might want to say your prayer. <laughs> if you don't pray, <laughs> he's going to pray for you. <laughs> Mr. White. Mr. Please, White. Jeff, thank you so much, man. Thanks, Mark. We're definitely Appreciate it, it, Mark. Again. So thank you. Appreciate it, bro. I appreciate you guys, man. I'll, I'll keep in contact with you guys. Uh, I'll be in, I'll be in town, and I'll I'll reach out to you. Guys. All awesome. right, thanks, bro. That's the great Mark McMillan. Thank you, sir. All right, keep up the good work.